Ladies and gentlemen, appreciate you being on. This is Andrew. Today, look, if you haven't gotten a hold of things yet during this week, we're talking a little bit more about scarcity, but we also want to, look, it's springtime. It's time to clear up your life. It's time to clear out the day-to-day. It's time to clear up your brain. So let's look at a couple of things that we can do to increase the way that we think. And then I'm going to give you some questions that you should be asking yourself consistently in order to live a life a little more free of some of the nonsense that we deal with on a regular basis. So let's dive into that. Um, now, on a totally related note, Monday through Friday, we have these calls live. If you're watching on YouTube, you know, if you guys haven't yet, make sure that you subscribe, um, you know, comment. Let me know what you think. I appreciate you guys that are showing that love already. Appreciate that. If you're not following me on Instagram, you can follow me there at the Phoenix Mentor. Um, I've got some an absolutely amazing guy that's taken some of this content and putting it there. There are ways to take your content and utilize it over and over and over again, guys. I, I talk about that. Work smarter, not harder. So find ways to do that in everything that you're doing. So, yes, Andrew, it's time to turn a new page. Um, let's uh, let's pop in there. Okay, so, oops, I jumped ahead. Let's get to, this was from yesterday. We are ourselves the only source of security in this life. But unlike those who depend on external forces, we can make ourselves truly secure. Remember that, guys, as you're looking at scarcity and abundance. So let's look at this story. 1960, a man named Shruli Blotnik, awesome name, Shruli, I'm probably saying that wrong. He began a study, 1,500 people representing a cross-section of middle-class America. 20-year study, a third almost passed, they lost from deaths, moves, or other factors. So they lost about a third of them. Now, a little over a 1,000 remained. 83 of those 1,000 became millionaires, right? That's actually a pretty decent rate when you break it down. Yes, sir. Can you go to your first slide for 30, uh, for a few seconds? Um, yeah. So I'll, I can send these slides out to everybody. Okay. Um, take you. a quick picture there, but we'll send them out. All right. So it's really here of the 1057, roughly, what is that? 8% almost just under 8% became millionaires. It's a pretty good average. Now, they found that 83 successful, of those 83 successful people, there were these five characteristics. So if you want to know what's necessary, these are five characteristics that you either need to have or develop. Ready? Persistent, patient, willing to handle both the nobler and the pettier aspects of their job. They had an increasingly non-competitive attitude towards coworkers. And their investment mm-hmm. activities consumed a minimum amount of their time and attention, meaning they were investing. They just weren't spending all day fussing about those activities. They would put their money to work, in other words. So persistence, patience, willing to do the work, right? Increasingly non-competitive attitude towards coworkers. So how do you apply that to what you've got going on right now? I don't know. we got somebody with a bit of noise in the background. Let me figure out who that is. Who's got, it's not me, is it? Am I the noise in the background? Okay. Sorry, it was me. Sorry about that. Okay, there we go. Okay, how many worked by themselves versus work for a company? Hardly, I'm not 100% sure on that. I don't have those numbers. Um, A lot of, I kind of go to what one of those five things was. They became increasingly non-competitive towards either coworkers or competitors, meaning oftentimes they weren't working by themselves, right? It's the whole, not only was Rome not built in a day, but, you know, it takes a village kind of thing. They understand the power of teams. There's very few self-made millionaires that don't have a team around them, that don't have support. I don't know if I've ever met someone that attains that level of wealth and beyond that didn't have some type of mentor that didn't have some support around them, that didn't have a network to aid them. So persistence and patience is the first part. This goes to what you're doing now on a day-to-day basis. Something real simple that we've talked about over and over and over again. The ability to deal with the day-to-day monotony on a regular basis and to do it and do it well is an underappreciated superpower. Every single day there are things that need to happen especially if you are building this business while you are continuing to work and you've got family and you've got children to take care of and we have pets, we have everything else, you still need to do things and you need to be patient. Do not overestimate what happens in the short term. 
But if you are willing to fight, if you are willing to grow, there are things that can happen long term that are amazing. Right. I'm super excited in the process this morning of planning out a mastermind um, in Colorado. That's what I was talking about. We're going to go up to Boulder in September, get together with a handful of guys that I've been working with remotely. Been working with them for, I don't know, six years. I've known some of these guys in different programs and, and they promoted things. And then we've talked and, and we've made money together on different projects. But our schedules have always you know, not worked out. So we're setting up a big Airbnb. We're going to go out there. We're going to bring people in to speak and train. And it's that team, but it's that patience and persistence. And so many times I could have given up. They could have given up. But you keep pushing through. Be patient with yourselves. I think most of us, instead of just being patient with the process, we're impatient with ourselves. Because we expect something to happen. We place these expectations on ourselves. And I get that question all the time. Where should I be right now? I should be here. Well, who told you you should be there? What are you doing for yourself? Just like health. We get in, we work out for a couple of weeks, we start to see some changes, and then two, three, four weeks in, all of a sudden we hit a plateau and things slow down. And now what? Are we going to quit? Are we going to keep going? And look, I'm I'm guilty of this, and, and most guys are too. You work out once or twice and you come home and you start flexing already in the mirror going, I think I can see a little bit of change. And my biceps are, is are peaking a little bit. Is that... Do I have two abs now or am I still at one big one, right? And you think right away things are going to happen. And then over the weekend, you end up with Papa John's and stuffed crust pizza. And you go, well, you know, I tried. It just didn't work out. You know, we do the same thing with our businesses. Guys, we need to be patient. We need to persevere. You need to keep going. But I love these five things. So patient, persistent, willing to handle all aspects, okay, and then non-competitive towards their coworkers, celebrating other people's success. We talked about this. Investment activities consume the minimum amount of their times that they put their money to work for them. He concludes that investing in yourself, what you do and with whom you do it are the most important determining factors of wealth. Invest in yourself, invest in what you do and with whom you do it. And if you do that consistently with the right group and the right product and the right vehicle it'll get you where you're looking to go okay so next developing out the consumer versus the producer mindset i'm going to send this slide to you guys but i want you to look at it real close how many of you guys looking at this honestly think that you kind of fall in line with the consumer mindset money and material wealth are a person's ultimate ambition They've got, you know, having those material things have intrinsic value. The demand for wealth opportunity far outweigh the supply. Like there's just, there's not enough out there. It's not working. It's working for them, but not for me because they got there first. You know, man, all these other people, they're just, they're getting it and I'm not. They're my competitors. How can I beat them down? Opportunities, choices, and prosperity restricted to external circumstances beyond their control. Right. I would do it or I would be able to, but this happened or that happened. Life, family, culture, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. I have to say, Andrew, um, I, I did think that at first until you really, um, 100 million businesses is a huge number. Okay. And there is, you know, without getting uh, too, too far into it, that point zero 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 seven percent saturation, that really tells you a lot right there. So, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot of it is just opening up and recognizing what's really in front of you and what's really possible. Right? Look, guys, if you want to build yourself into become like that 1% and, and everything else, and the top 1% here in the United States, for example, we're looking at it, you know, no matter where you're at in the world, look at what the top 1% of income earners are where you are. The top 1% here in the U.S. aren't earning millions of dollars a year. It's just over 400000 which is, look, that's great money, but it's not millions and millions a year. $160,000 a year puts you in the top 10% of income earners in the U.S. If you want to know how lucky you are, ladies and gentlemen, how many of you on average, like $36,000 or let's say $40,000 or above annually, 
You don't need to raise your hands, but I want you to think about that. $40,000 or above. That puts you in the top 1% of income earners in this world, just $40,000 a year. Now, I know in some places, or especially if you've got family, if you've got kids, or if there's some medical this or that, that's not enough. We need more. You need to do more. And there's nothing wrong with wanting more because you want to be able to provide more for your family or you want to be able to help others. But think for a second and be grateful for how lucky you really have it. $40,000 a year puts you in the top 1% of income earners in the world. How much better off are you than, than a lot of other people? And I think to me, one of the biggest things that... <clears throat> you, Andrew, one second. Yes, sir. Uh, are you doing with the top 1% in the world uh, $40,000 earning with the exchange rate or just a straight dollar to dollar? Dollar, dollar amount. So U.S. Pardon? dollars, $40,000 or more a year, puts you in the top 1% in the world. Really? Okay. So U.S., it's, you know, top, top 1% is 440 ballpark, but top 1% in the world, that puts you there, right? Just think about the amount of wealth that you have with what you have right now. Now, I, I was very lucky and blessed when I was. I, I uh, think I, I won't know that because I live in the oil country here, Western Canada. So our, you know, um, normal income yeah, earner for, for a couple is like, Minimum was one hundred fifty thousand dollars here in Alberta. Right. Well, that puts them that puts them well beyond. We're talking overall in the world, so okay. you know we're comparing everybody overall population in the world, not talking individual communities, right? To be top one percent in an individual community, obviously those those vary greatly. I'm talking about taking the entire population of the world and saying what's the average income, what's the top this percent, what's the top one percent. If you're if we take that overall top one percent, forty k or above, right? Now, what you need to look at is, you know, where your vision of prosperity and um, scarcity and everything else comes from, right? Could we have weird echo again? So looking at, there we go. Thank you. Um, you know, I had a chance when I was 19 to 21 years old. During that time, I, I spent some time in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. So I was in central Rio de Janeiro, and then I also spent time, um, you know, all the way around, right, in different cities. I spent time in an area called the Baixada Fluminense, which is a – it's a pretty rough area. During that time, while I was in Rio, there was the war going on in Kosovo, in Eastern Europe, right? And while I was there, you know, the, the UN is fighting in Europe – Death and, and destruction and all of all sorts of different things were difficult there. While I was in, there was this two month period, two or three month period while I was in Rio that in this one area, the Baixada Fluminense, there were more murders that took place in the Baixada Fluminense than a war zone in Europe. That was the area of Rio that I was in. And I remember being in certain places from the New Year's from 99 to 2000. Right. Y2K. While I'm there, um, there was a tremendous rainstorm in the south of Brazil. And there's a r- river that runs through Rio called the Rio Paraíba, and it runs north or south to north. Right. And it's one of the few rivers in the world that does it, but it runs south to north. It's a huge river. And it ran through the city that I was in. I was in an area called Baja Mansa, which is near a spot called Volta Redonda. It's just outside of, you know, um, couple hours outside of Rio by bus. And the rain had started south of Brazil over this river and it rained for days. And what happens that river after days and days of rain and runoff, the river transbordo, uh, it overran. What do you call it in English? I'm just thinking in Portuguese. I start thinking about Brazil. It transbordo, it, it, it just overflowed, right? Yeah. Neighborhoods were covered in water. Cars were covered in water. You, you know, it was it was horrendous. And so we spent days after the rain finally died down and, and the water descended a bit. We spent days mucking out people's homes. And I'm in neighborhoods at that time um, where you have these homes that are partially made of brick, partially made of wood. Some of them are made with aluminum signage. The the bathrooms are a toilet with a, a PVC pipe out into a, you know, a, a ditch that's dug out in between homes going down an area. 
And these people, instead of going, you know, my house was covered in sludge, disgusting things, right, with water up till, you know, six foot or above in some of these homes, because a lot of them, the neighborhoods right along the river, instead of insurance being able to come in and fix things, they're going in, they're hosing it down, scrubbing the walls off, throwing out all of their furniture and all of those things and starting over. And sometimes we complain about what we have. Darn it, my computer this morning, the audio wasn't working. What the hell am I going to do? Oh, my iPhone's got a crack in it. Well, crap. Look, guys, scarcity and abundance, you are already living lives of abundance. You just don't recognize it. Once you make yourself aware of all that you have, life starts taking on a different hue. Once you realize that you've got the control over how you react to the world, possibilities open up. Just look at things a little bit differently. Now, a couple of quick things. Here's where we're going to look through these. Again, guys, I'll send these slides out later today. I wanted to make sure we wrapped up this training before I got them out to everybody. So scarcity and abundance, this is how I'm looking at life. Win-lose, win-win, fear versus faith, selfishness, service. Dependence and interdependence. One day we'll, we'll end up talking a little bit about dependence, codependence, and interdependence. Ownership and stewardship. Everybody know the difference there? Maybe we'll talk about stewardship one day. What it means to own something but guide it and control it and help it. Accumulation versus utilization. How do I make the most of? Destruction and creation. Luck and accountability. Entitlement value versus creation. I'm going to produce something. I'm going to make it happen. I don't deserve anything but the best that I put out there, but nobody, I don't deserve anything from anybody else, right? It's all about me and my effort and what I'm putting into it. So guys, always look at work, whatever you do, your work, your family, your relationships, everything, put in more than the reward that you're seeking and you'll get what you're looking for. So here's a couple of things. It's springtime. Let's look at what we can do to clean up ourselves put ourselves in a mind space physically, emotionally, and mentally to have a little more abundance. So ask yourself these questions. Take a picture. I'm going to send the slides out after this so you can keep them. But I want you to think a little bit. And if something pops into your mind right now, as we're talking about these, please write it down. If there's something immediately right there, write it down. In what areas of your life do you need a breath of fresh air? What has become stagnant? What is keeping you from taking that next step? What cobwebs need to be swept away to appreciate the life that you have? Think about the story I just shared, right? I grew up in a family from a, you know, a poor home in Oakland, California to a poor home in Prescott, Arizona, right? I remember growing up getting that, the box of, of food when we needed help occasionally, getting that big block. I, I don't know how many of you guys, and, and you don't have to admit it or not, but have you ever received that, that box of support from local entities? And I remember getting a block of cheese food, right? It wasn't cheese. It was cheese food. It wasn't pasteurized the same way. Yes, yes, it was government cheese. And, and I remember even as a kid, a young kid, because obviously I've got a tremendous amount of snark and sarcasm. I went to my dad and I go, all right, dad, where's the cheese? He goes, you're holding it. I go, nope, this is the cheese food. This is what we're supposed to feed the cheese. Ha ha, Andrew, very funny. But I remember growing up like that. And then from there, yeah, powdered milk that, man, it doesn't matter how much you mix that stuff. It's just, it's never good. Anyway, going from there to being in Brazil and looking around and going, holy crap, how good did I have it, really, compared with some of this? And maybe that's what some of you guys need to do. I think was it Hartley up here had a comment on, on Bangkok and others. Like when you get an opportunity and, and you guys are earning money and it's time for a vacation, like go somewhere luxurious, go somewhere fun, go somewhere, you know, step into an amazing resort, but find a way. You know, Cause no matter where you're at in the world, you'll have those resorts right there. But within a half a mile, within a couple of blocks, you'll find areas of poverty that you will just make you shake your head and say, oh my gosh, what can I do to create a bigger impact? 
because yes, I want to enjoy my life, but who else can benefit if I live my life to the best of my abilities, right? Think about the nonsense that you grew up with that is keeping you from living in abundance now, right? That's important. It's a little bit of spring cleaning for you today. All right. What do you need to clear up so that you can spring forward? And last four questions. What needs a mental spring cleaning in your life? What is it that's cluttering your mind? Mentally, what is just sitting there taking up space? Next, what needs a physical cleaning? Do you have things that need to be filed? Do you have books that need to be put away? Is your closet a mess? Is the garage a mess? How many of you guys have a junk drawer that needs needs cleaning out? Be honest. You all do. Right? We've all got a junk drawer. Go clean it up. Just one. Some people have a junk closet, junk cabinet, junk garage. If you ever work with a banker, they will teach you how not to be a junkie because they want to want you to keep it clean. <laughs> yeah, you keep everything clean, ladies and gentlemen, an entire basement. Clean it out. Forest, 10 of them. Clean it up, guys. If you've got 10 forests, clean one of them today and clean one tomorrow. Start organizing some stuff. Half of the apartment. Aga does her, her content and I'm sure that area is just clean and perfect. And then the rest of the apartments where everything else fits, right? Get in your closet. So for me, this, uh, today's Wednesday, right? So by tomorrow, I've got my closet. I need to clean up some stuff, right? I'm going to make that work. Get my laundry all done. Take care of that, right? And this is, you know, Sierra and I have been living together for a while. She's got the master bedroom closet and then I have one of the other closets. I don't know how many of you gentlemen have that same thing. Somebody's taken over the one, right? Anyway, clean up, guys. Next, last couple of questions for you for your spring cleaning. What attitude needs adjusting? And then what can we clean up spiritually that is draining energy? Spiritually and emotionally, there's something that's just sucking energy away. And maybe it's one of those difficult conversations. It's one of those ones that's going to make you sweat for a little bit. But figure out whatever it is that's spiritually draining energy. If there's something that's keeping you up at night, if there's something you haven't handled, Guys, it's springtime now, officially. Figure out what you need to do to clean things up. Figure out, because if we can clean that up, then mentally we can put ourselves in a space where we can live a life of more abundance. We can rid ourselves of some of the scarcity. We can think more clearly and more passionately about what we are going to do to create an impact in other people's lives. Get out and make that happen. Take some time today. Everybody have a drawer, a closet, or something that they can do today. And and along with that, you can sit down and you can write out these other seven questions. You're going to get the email here. I'll send it out in the next 15 minutes. You'll get an email with all of these slides. Scroll all the way to the bottom. Look at those questions. Sit down and answer them, everybody, and figure out what you need to do to clean things up. And on that note, I will let you go. I will be here tomorrow. We're going to get into headlines, copyright, and everything else. Come in and be ready to learn. Appreciate you guys. Love you. Have an amazing day. Talk soon.